Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today to talk about how to feed a raw diet. This is a very highly requested video and I just wanted to quickly say thank you guys so much for the feedback that I've been receiving on all of my favorite videos. I have never received this many comments, this much feedback before ever, so I'm definitely going to keep on making uh, ferret content because it's apparently been helpful for you guys and that makes me so happy that was the goal this video is going to be all about feeding raw specifically feeding a frank and prey style diet now i am going to be glancing over at my notes a lot during this video because there is a lot to go over and i don't want to ramble too much so just to keep me on track now just a little disclaimer here i do not claim to be an animal nutritionist i do extensive research and uh, my menu my meal plan that i have for my boys is is uh, something that I've formulated with um, other ferret owners in the community that have been feeding raw for many years and it's been what has it's been working for them and um, my veterinarian who um, normally isn't super pro raw per se thinks that I'm doing a very good job I'm going to be linking below my diary that I was posting while transitioning my boys onto RAW, um, so definitely feel free to check that out so you can see exactly all the steps that I took to get to where I am today, all the challenges, all the awesome things that happened, um, and all that great stuff. So I'm going to be mentioning the Holistic Ferret Forum a lot in this video. That's mainly where I got a lot of my uh, topics from, a lot of my sources from, because they have a really, really good collection of resources on there and it is just an amazing website. So firstly, what is Frank and Prey? So Frank and Prey is a raw diet model where you create meals, um, whole prey meals from animals using their bones, meat and organs uh, from various animals and like sort of putting it together to create a meal plan, sort of like Frankenstein, like taking bits and pieces to create, you know, a really nice meal. So why should you feed or why should you consider feeding your ferret a raw diet. Uh, one, they are obligate carnivores, which I talked more about in my last video. They need to eat meat and meat only. Same with cats. This means that they can handle raw meat with bacteria levels that would normally really affect a human, but it doesn't affect them negatively because they have a higher acid concentration in their stomachs and a shorter digestive tract. So food goes from one end to the other end of a ferret very quickly within like two to four hours. So this means that like salmonella and E. coli bacteria, they simply do not have enough time to take root into a ferret. This doesn't mean that it can't happen, but it's very rare in a healthy ferret. Kibble meets the minimum requirements for a ferret's needs, and this is because the kibble manufacturer manufacturers will usually use the cheapest ingredients to make the most profit in their food so they're not they don't have your animals you know needs in mind they just want money 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 because they're a business and uh, so they put the cheapest things in to make the most food um, at the best price possible so more people are going to buy it <laughs> so to gloss over some of the benefits of feeding raw here uh, I'll just uh, list off a couple things that I I have personally noticed in my ferrets and how and what a lot of other people notice when they switch their ferrets over to raw and that is better health and this is because ferrets are designed to thrive on this diet better dental care because um, if they are continuously eating the bones that they're supposed to eat in their diet it will naturally wear away the plaque on their teeth so you don't have to brush their teeth you don't have to worry about that um, they very rarely will have dental disease if you're feeding a raw diet uh, they have more energy this is one that I have noticed the most with my boys. Uh, before, when I was feeding kibble, not only were they getting constant diarrhea, um, they smelled super super terrible like oh you guys have no idea um and but they were just they didn't have the energy that they have now uh for patsu for example he has bountiful energy he is just running all day playing with toys all day and he used to never do that never this next benefit is something that i think a lot of people will enjoy and that is less poop so and then the poop that you do get is smaller because your ferrets are uh, taking in more of the nutrients in the food so there's less to come out and it doesn't smell as strong too which um, I think a lot of you will like <laughs> and also it is naturally grain free and pea free 
uh, as well as starch free. So all of these things are very bad. You do not want peas or grain in your ferrets food and you also uh, do not want sugar in your food as well for your ferrets and it's really really hard to avoid those things if you feed a kibble. A lot of kitten kibbles if you feed your ferret will have some sort of like peas in the list and because the diet is naturally starch free it can help prevent the development of insulinoma. It's hard to avoid unless you feed a starch-free diet. Um, if you, if your pet already, if you've been feeding a starch, a diet with starch in it, sometimes uh, you'll your ferret will already have started developing the insulinoma. So feeding raw isn't going to reverse it, but it can help maintain the uh, condition. So next, I'm going to be talking about raw feeding myths because there are a lot of myths, and you've probably heard all of them before. Um, so the question of bacteria is probably the first thing, which I already sort of talked about in the beginning. Yes, raw food does contain bacteria, but so does kibble. Kibble can contain molds and other pathogens, and they can contain something called aflatoxins. I believe that's how you pronounce it, aflatoxins, uh, which contaminate agricultural crops before harvest. It can also contaminate post-harvest crops as well if they're kept in like a wet uh, environment. The aflatoxins can grow on corn, rice, wheat, and soybeans, and these ingredients you find pretty frequently in let's say kibbles uh, a lot of dog kibbles have corn and rice in them um, and a lot of cat kibbles as well so which is what a lot of people choose to feed their ferrets so you just have to be really careful of those things I think it's wrong to say that feeding kibble is a hundred percent safe because it's not so there are a couple cons to feeding raw that I have experienced number one being veterinarians disapproval uh, and this is mainly because veterinarians, they, they have seen what can happen if you feed an improper raw diet, usually aren't as openly supportive about it because they can't, you know, trust every client that walks in the door that they are going to feed a properly balanced raw diet. And I get this. Um, however, please keep in mind that veterinarians are not pet nutritionists. A lot of people think that veterinarians are know-alls. They know everything when it comes to pet nutrition and that's simply not not true. Um, unfortunately, to become a veterinarian, you only have to take a couple courses, I believe, in pet nutrition uh, when there are other people who are specifically trained to be pet nutritionists, so do not confuse the two. The next thing is expense, and a lot of raw feeders will justify this by saying you can potentially avoid very hefty vet bills down the line if you feed raw, but I don't like to bank on this because you never know what can happen, and even if you feed your pet the great diet ever they can still develop things uh, that can be really expensive so I still consider the expense to be an inconvenience um, I buy my bone and organs in bulk uh, which is usually 50 to 75 dollars a month depending and then that and then I buy twenty dollars worth of meat and eggs from the store every few weeks uh, keep in mind commercial raw and freeze-dried raw which I'm not really touching on in this video is much more expensive the next thing is your ferret will probably start stacking their raw meat which can be really inconvenient if you let your ferrets free roam your entire house because your house may start smelling of raw meat and you can't figure out where the source is now I only feed my ferrets raw in my bedroom so they can't really go very far with it usually they'll take it up into their cage or um, they have a tube that they like to put their raw meat in. If you provide them with a tunnel, sort of like in the middle of your room and they start stashing there, it's much more convenient because you can clean it up easier. So just try to build them something for a place for them to stash their food. Feeding raw can be somewhat time consuming. Uh, I find that pre-packaging all of the meals and labeling everything takes me like an hour or two and that can be kind of annoying with my schedule sometimes but it's worth it so what i do is i just create a meal plan and then i follow it every single week so it's really simple i just take the food out of the freezer uh, to dethaw it and that's it we have a visitor someone woke up from his nap hello pachu anyways um so <laughs> now we are going to talk a little bit about how to start feeding a raw diet thank you for the kisses so there are a couple methods that you can do to start feeding a raw diet. The list is uh, making a soup, uh, hand feeding them, nose dolloping, uh, trying commercial raw. That's what I did. I kind of did all of these things. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. And scruff and stuff, which is not something that I've done um, because I don't really 
like scruffing my ferrets, but uh, yep. So I'll talk about all of them. So soup, basically what you do is you just blend up uh, boneless chicken thighs, something like that, something easy for them to uh, eat. Oh, some of them will, my boys did, which I was very surprised. Uh, some will not touch it. So then you can either hand feed them, which sometimes Howell, I need to hand feed him still uh, in order to get him to eat his food. Um, or you can try dolloping it on their nose when they're playing. So just kind of put like a little doop on their nose and then they have to lick it off at some point. Um, so that kind of helps introduce it to them. And then the, uh, you can try commercial raw as well. I tried Darwin's, which they really liked. Um, and then I also did the hair today grinds. <laughs> Darwin's is really expensive, but they do offer a free trial. Oh, <laughs> Fatsu. <laughs> He's stretching back there. They do offer a free trial, which is very cheap, and uh, you can get a lot of food from it, so definitely look into that. <laughs> uh, scruffing stuff is pretty self-explanatory. You scruff them, and then you put the food down their throat gently. I don't feel comfortable doing this, so I don't. Keep in mind that an average female will eat around one to three ounces of food a day, when a male is usually two to four ounces a day. Uh, kits may eat more. Patsu and Howl eat four ounces each every day, um, sometimes more than that, depending on what food I have down for them. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that there's a little bit of food behind each meal. Uh, that way you know that they both got as much food as they wanted to eat, and uh, they one didn't eat all the food and then the other didn't have any. You may need to feed kibble for one meal and raw for another meal while you're transitioning. Just make sure that they are hours apart. And this is not something that you should be doing long term. No, feeding both raw and kibble together is not a balanced diet. It's not something that you should be doing. However, a lot of people do this for some reason because I think they think that oh, I can, raw is really good for them, and then I feed kibble to sort of make up for what I'm missing in the raw diet, but that's not how it works. It messes with your ferret's stomach bacteria uh, because they're getting bacteria from two different sources that are completely different, and it can negatively affect your ferret. Uh, they can have a bacteria overload and other stomach issues. So here's a list of things that you will need when feeding a raw diet. You're going to need a cutting board. I like to have one specifically for for my meat so the raw meat juices don't you know absorb into the cutting board that we use for ourselves uh, gloves are optional I started using gloves but then I realized it was just Eh, whatever. The next thing you need is a good meat cleaver, something that is strong enough to cut through bones. I recommend getting some sort of blender or food processor that you don't use for people. So you're gonna need freezer space. You're gonna need a lot of freezer space depending on how you are sectioning your meat. You're gonna need Ziploc bags and a permanent marker to label everything. Uh, you're gonna need a correct and balanced meal plan. This is the most important thing. Okay, so on to my meal plan and why I feed all of these products. I'm going to be linking the Holistic Ferret Forum's Frank and Prey basic diet menu, which I definitely recommend that you follow. So I kind of made my own according to my lifestyle. Okay, so every single morning I feed a bone-in meat. However, lately I've been reversing my order, so I will feed the other things that I feed at dinner in the morning and bone at night. That way I can monitor them when they're eating their bone because I have this fear that Patsu's gonna choke on a bone and I'm gonna be at work. And yeah, so I've been starting to feed the bone in meals at nighttime, but this is what the meal plan is right now. So I'm just gonna keep going over it this way. So bone in meat, every single morning, you wanna do seven to nine meals of bone in meat. Uh, and then in the afternoon on Mondays and Tuesdays, I feed muscle meat and this can be anything. Um, I'll talk more about specifically what I, f what I feed later. But uh, Wednesday in the afternoon, I do a heart meal and I also give them one egg per ferret, one raw egg yolk or egg whisked together completely. Um, whisked together completely, it's a lot for them to eat and Patsu isn't crazy on eggs. So usually I just feed the egg yolk. On Thursday, it's the same 
as the other days with the bone-in in the morning and the muscle meat at night. Friday is bone-in in the morning uh, and then an organ, liver, and heart meal at dinner time. Saturday is bone-in, muscle meat. Sunday is bone-in and then organs and liver. In total, you're gonna wanna make sure you have one and a half meals of organ, half of which is liver, half of which is a different organ, one and a half meals of heart, seven to nine meals of bone and meat, two to four meals of boneless muscle meat, uh, one egg per ferret per week whisked together completely or just the yolk and then you want to make sure that you are feeding three to four different proteins more is better I like to feed things like rabbit and mice even though they don't like the mice uh, chicken turkey I have a list of favorite foods that the boys really enjoy for bone-in meals they love chicken or turkey necks and uh, chicken thigh as well but the necks are a huge hit I always feed necks for bone-in uh, meals and sometimes it's just all chicken necks and then I make sure everything else is a variety of different proteins. For muscle meat they love gizzards, beef, turkey meat, rabbit and this can be either ground or chunks but make sure not to feed too much ground meat because you want them to get their jaws going all the time so you're gonna want to add some chunks to it but it's really a personal preference, that's what I like to do. Uh, for heart, they like chicken or turkey heart. Organ, beef kidney is a huge hit with my boys and it's really easy to cut in section and I can get it uh, right on hairtoday.com, so that's where I order it. Uh, for liver, chicken or beef liver, and I like both of these because I can get both of these at my grocery store, so it's very convenient. For eggs, just regular chicken eggs. Some people like to feed quail eggs because it's a better size but you know, I can't really get those at my store, so I just get chicken eggs. When I section and store my meat, I always do four ounce of bone-in products and muscle meat. For heart, I do four ounce bags. For liver, I do one ounce bags. And for kidney, I do one ounce bags. So this is actually all that I have for my video today. It feels like it was a really short video, but that's what I wanted it to be. I didn't want it to be super long and rambly. So definitely feel free to check out the links that I'm going to leave below that will give you more information as far as feeding raw and and we'll hopefully answer more of your questions but if you do have questions feel free to leave them below I always check all of my comments and I always reply back if you want uh, if you do create a balanced uh, meal plan and you want it to and you want to run it by someone feel free to send me a message either on my Instagram account I think that's really the only place you can message me uh, feel free to send me a picture or a written version of it through uh, DMs and I will go over it and let you know what you may be missing or what you should add and uh, thank you guys so so much for the feedback that I've been getting on these videos it's been absolutely crazy and something that I wasn't planning on at all if you think of any other video ideas please do comment down below and I will most likely do them and I hope that you had a, a wonderful weekend and I will see you in my next video bye